blown up. I was shot. I was the sole survivor of a massacre. I was buried alive twice and put up with four others to be shot by a machine gun. So that's um, quite a lot to hang on to, isn't it? And so I started prisoner of war with nothing, no clothes, n no, nothing to eat with. And so I <coughs> cut a <coughs> pair of uh, chopsticks out of a bamboo hedge. Here they are. These are 75 years old now. And of course in those days I didn't know how to use chopsticks. So I actually made a point on that one. I thought if I can't pick it up that way, I'll pick it up this way. <laughs> Not that you could with rice. But I've had these for 75 years. I use them every day. Saves the washing up. Yes, easy. <laughs> and I had no clothes at all uh, because my clothes had been cut off me. I wasn't the only one wandering around naked. A lot of people were. Uh, but it wasn't until uh, about a year later I got issued with something to wear. And that was the Japanese loincloth. <coughs> That's the actual one that I wore for three and a half years. There's a picture of it there with me wearing it. And the reason it's there is because you can see in that picture that at one time I did have a body. Not the one I've got now. <laughs> That's the actual clothing. That's my actual feeding thing. And um, I've had those now for 70 years on. Well now, I was on the bridges, the bridge over the River Kwai. There is no such place as the River Kwai. Kwai means river. The place was Kwai Koinoi, but um, we have the same here. Avon means river, so the River Avon is the River River. Um, and I was on those bridges. Uh, I was on the one that the book is written about. By the way, it's not bamboo, it's solid concrete with steel uh, arches and things, and it's, you can still use it today. Uh, so the book is just fiction in every sense. Good film, but nothing could have happened like that. <coughs> and I was on a job at a place called Wampo, where we built a viaduct. And this is a time when they started the speedo period. We had been given six months to build this uh, viaduct, which is nearly a mile long, and uh, in the end it's, it's got to be done in six weeks. So we were working all day, 18 hours a day, with 60 grams of rice and that was it, so we were dying like flies. And uh, when we'd assembled this bridge, it was all jointed and we had sort of uh, iron dog bits and things like that. But in every joint we put a little box of, uh, of termites, hoping they'd eat the bridge when, we, when we'd gone. But I found out lately they don't like teak, so they don't last long. But when it was up, and it was a hundred feet up the side of a mountain, we had to blow the mountain away uh, with dynamite it was the only job I was ever on where we had to have elephants to help us because teak is so heavy. And there again, the Japanese decided that what an elephant could do, five of us could do. Impossible. And especially as we were emaciated by that time. <coughs> but of course, uh, I by now had got terrible vertigo through being blown up which to this day gets worse every day. And when we got this up, we had to climb up there 100 feet and creosote it. And they gave us a big sort of five gallon oil thing full of creosote. And you had to carry that up there. You had a bamboo pole with a sack on the end of it. You had to dip it in and do that. And if you've got a spot of it on you, immediately you've got a blister because it was 110 degrees in the sun. We worked right through the midday sun. And this Jap guard told me to get up and do this, and I told him I couldn't, all in sign language. <clears throat> and he, he said, said, you know, get up there. And I said, I can't, and I went like this. So he went off to get a bamboo pole to beat me up with. So I started climbing. 
Well, with my hand, I hadn't got the use of my hand for seven years after that. So I, it was like this. I couldn't carry anything with it, so I had to carry stuff on my elbow like that. And five gallon drum of creosote is very heavy. And uh, climbing with vertigo, out of the question. But anyway, when he came back with his bamboo pole, I started climbing, as you would. And uh, <clears throat> where I was shot, I was shot through the back of the knee. And so I can't lift my foot off the ground. In fact, the shoe that I'm wearing, you'll see there's a, a ring on it for lifting it off the ground. So that won't come off the ground without help. <coughs> so I had a rope tied round there, which I used to use for walking, lifting up. And there again, I had no sense of pain in that leg. And uh, the, the knot from the rope wore its way through my foot, right through. I could put my hand underneath the leaders in there. Uh, so that was the only way I could get about was with this and carry things on there. And I started climbing and I had the most terrible, the whole world was spinning round and you get nauseous with it as well. But I did, I managed to get up there, it took me 35 minutes. And when I got up there, I just uh, hung on to it and shut my eyes. On that day I found a hat which I put on, a banana leaf hat. And there I was up there with this creosote and him down there shouting at me and I was going like this. If God Almighty had told me to get on with it, I couldn't. If I moved, I was going to fall off that hundred feet. And he came up after me as fast as he could, 35 seconds I think. And when he got to me, he threw the five gallons of creosote over me. As I say, <coughs> fortunately, <coughs> I found a hat that day and I managed to get my head down. So I didn't get any on my face, but the rest of me was burnt straight away. And I came up in huge blisters, just like the Michelin man. And uh, you could hear the blisters forming. And uh, I was telling somebody about this in Singapore three or four years ago. A party of us ex-prisoners of war went out there and I was telling them about this and I said I never found out whether I fell off the viaduct or whether I jumped. All I can remember is waking up in the river with fellows washing me down and one of the men that was there that day said no you didn't fall, we carried you. So that man had been on the bridge on that day and they carried me down off the bridge, washed me down, <clears throat> but I was in such a state of burnt that the Japs could see that I was not fit for anything. If you said you've got a bad heart, they'd say, it looks all right to me, get on with it. But when they could see me, they put me on a train down country and I was never on the railway again. I remember when they said to me, you're going down country, I went to some of my friends that I'd been working with, eight fellows from my regiment, <coughs> and I said, um, oh, I'll see you soon, I expect. And my friend said, you won't see us. So I said, why not? He said, we'll all be dead. They were all dead three weeks later. <laughs>